If you're familiar with Palefish at all, then you're probably familiar with this face. And today I'm bringing the easy, breezy, beautiful Palefish girl back to your viewing pleasure here, but with something completely different. That's Teacher Sap, and Teacher Sap has created lessons that work interactive on the Classin platform. But if you're interested in teaching interactive lessons on Classin, you definitely have to watch this video. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jillian from JillianChanahan.com and on this channel I teach you how to make money as an online teacher. If you are not yet subscribed, make sure you click subscribe and hit that little bell notification so you don't miss my future uploads. And today we have Teacher Sav and I don't know if you guys saw like the thumbnail for this. Anybody who works for Palefish recognizes those pictures. That was actually a real person and this is the real person we've got the palefish cover girl here with us today um so <laughs> i don't know That's how you feel about comments. Different. i know <laughs> <Right>? i know <laughs> so we have the easy breezy beautiful palefish girl here um but she's actually not here to talk about palefish palefish is a thing of the past for her and she has been creating a or she has created a um system for online ESL teachers to use. So, uh, Zach, would you like to tell us a little bit about that? For sure. So like, like you said, I've worked with Palfish. I've worked teaching ESL online for like eight and a half years now. And when it was sort of time to go independent, uh, I just, I couldn't find what I wanted when it came to materials. I wanted something progressive that was, you know, of the similar uh, functionality of the big companies, what they have, how it leads into it and all the levels and reviews. So eventually I just decided, well, I have to make it myself. <laughs> so I started ESLEDB.com with my uh, partner and uh, we are working on a full curriculum along with um, fun extra games and they're available for, uh, I'm, I teach mainly on class in, but we also provide like PDF version so everyone can use it on any platform that they use. So that's a, a brief int introduction to what ESL ADB is. Like everybody knows what a PDF is. Right. Um, I don't think every, everybody knows what an EDB is. What is that? It's interesting. Um, it's an old file type, actually, that was originally created for uh, Windows XP, and it was used in like business analytics because you could drag things around and move it in sort of time. So Classin uses EDB files because um, when you... Uh, make an EDB file, you can click and drag, same with the student. So it's very interactive. Um, and it can, um, like I said, you can drag things around, you can implant things into the file. So it's basically an extra fun sort of interactive PDF. Oh, okay. So when you use the ESL EDB files mm -hmm. on class in, mm -hmm. you are actually able to make it pretty much like a Palfish VIP kid kind of copycat exactly. thing, right? Yeah. So like for Palfish or other platforms that people may have worked for, but I work for Palfish. So there you could drag, like the kid would say, I want some oranges and you could drag and give them oranges. That's the same thing as an EDB file. Um, it's just a little bit different, a little older. So you can drag it all, you know, to them. You can match things up um, and it's really fun and interactive like that. And maybe I can later sort of screen share and show you guys how one of those works. And they're yeah, fun. that is really cool. You can go ahead and screen share anytime you want to. If you want to do that right now, you can. Oh, um, how mm -hmm. how um how like who are these for? How old are the students? Yes. What are their levels? What do so, you have? We are making six different levels in our curriculum, and um, we start. We're starting out with uh, level zero, which is for zero base uh, language or English learners, um, just because. There's a lot of sort of pre-K material out there, but when it comes specifically to zero level base learners, I was having a hard time finding uh, content to teach a lot of my really younger students. So we're starting with that and then we're building it up to level five. So level zero through level five and level zero, um, that one has eight different uh, units in it and each one has 10 lessons in it. So there's 80 lessons in level zero and then each one after that will have 100 lessons per level. Um, in it. And we'll we'll have level one done pretty soon. And then we'll hopefully get level two and three done by the end of June. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And are these are, um, is this kind of like a teacher's pay teachers thing where you download it? Or is it more of like a mm -hmm. subscription thing where you log in and access mm -hmm. it? 
Right. So I never really liked using the ones that you had to log in and access it just because there's sometimes, uh, you know, internet problems if I can't access it or something. So you can, when you buy it, um, it you download it and now you, you have that file to use on whichever platform that you'd like. So it is uh, a copy that it comes with and each one, when you download it, it gets, there's an EDB file for Classen, and then there's a PDF version that we've transitioned a little bit because you can't drag all of the items around. Um, so we made that, that for the static PDF version of it. Okay, very cool. And um, you could also use it on Koala Go too. Yeah, no, I've uploaded it on Koala Go, um, uh, Zoom, you know, you can use it on, well, anything that you can either screen share or <laughs> upload a PDF. So yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you could use personal. the EDB files. You could use the EDB files on Koala Go, right? I don't know I enough know. about EDB. I, I don't know that Koala Go has that ability. Uh, I tried once a while ago and it didn't work, but that was a few months ago. So maybe they've progressed things. Maybe you can use it. At the moment, I think it's only uh, the EDBs are just for class in. Um, but at some point, um, we might maybe add some more interact, um, you know, clickable uh, items into the PDFs. At the moment, we're just sort of getting it all uh, out there. Maybe we'll edit in the future if we have that time. But at the moment, I just want to get all of these uh, levels out for whoever, you know, needs them for. Yeah. For yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's see it. Let's see it. Yes. All right. So I haven't uh, shared my screen on this one before. So let me try it out. Here we go. So entire screen share. All right. So, all right. So you can tell me if you can still see me. Can you still see me over here? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So this is an example of what um, class in looks like and an EDB file. So for example, here, this is part of our level zero. So very basic, um, zero based uh, uh, English learners would take these lessons. And sort of with each lesson, um, we have the, what shows you in this lesson. Essentially, no prep. <laughs> um, and as you go through, this one is extremely simple because, like I said, it's level zero. So, you know, things like like, like, I like it. It goes through. We're introducing some fruit. But let me get down to the bottom. I'm going to scroll <laughs> to where it gets interactive. So here, of course, you can draw in circle like you can on other things. For example, circle one watermelon. We'll circle, you know, one watermelon piece. And then here, this is the fun thing about Classen and the EDB file type. Here, the teacher would read, I like oranges. And every page that has a draggable element on it, I put this little finger tap. So it lets them know they can click it. And then they can drag the orange over to the hungry monster. <laughs> the next one, they can drag the watermelon over them, uh, over to the monster, and then grapes. And then down here, they can do some sorting. So it's really fun, interactive, and it's uh, quite easy for them to understand, which I like. And then they can move things over. So this is an example of the uh, EDB version of it. The PDF version, it's the same, except for they're just going to circle these things, or I'll sometimes have it so they have to draw a line to match it to the different ones. So that's an example of level zero. Um, do you mind if I show you an example of level uh, one? You can show us whatever you want to. I like this. Show us anything you want to. <laughs> yeah. So for level one, it gets a little bit more complex, which is also a little bit just more fun as a teacher. And we've added some more elements in there to make it um, even easier so the, the um, teachers don't have to prep. Um, and in these, you might recognize these <laughs> from Palfish. Uh, not from Palfish, but um, we've added some little, let me drag it down here. We've added little teacher guidance boxes. So for example, if there's a game or something and someone isn't quite sure of how uh, even though they're pretty simple, um, we have that all in there. So you can just open it up and start teaching without really having to preview the material. And the other really cool thing that we added into level one, let me scroll down here, it's at the bottom, is we've added homework. So everything that is going, uh, that is level one and up, we've provided this little page, Today You Learned. And this is meant to either screenshot and send to the parents um, and the students so that you don't have to spend time really 
writing a little thing, this is what you learned today. And then down here, we also have homework pre-made that they can also send to the parents so that um, you don't have to spend extra time <laughs> doing all of these things. Like I said, when I first started, it was so hard um, just making all of the content that I wanted. And I was spending hours preparing for one class and then making homework for them. So I just really wanted to take that aspect out of um, out of ESLEDB so that the teachers have more free time to spend, you know, doing as as they'd like. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's essentially it for this one. And let me show you a little bit of what we have going on over here on uh, ESLEDB.com. So we do have for our no prep sort of curriculum, we have, like I said, eight units in level zero. That one's completely done. Um, another sort of big thing for me is that in addition to no prep, um, I wanted to, it, everything was so expensive um, that I tried. It was like $100 here, 300 there, or you can buy this one and it's sort of crazy. So I tried to make it, we're trying to make it as affordable as possible. One unit is $18. And that has 10, 25 minute lessons in that unit. And so that's one thing that was really big to me because it was hard to sort of start out and, and think, oh, I have to spend all this money on all these things. And for level one, we're going to be releasing unit five tomorrow, I believe. It's on a uh, farmer's market. It's a pretty fun one with vegetables. And like I said, we should have, we have most of this almost done. So it should be done in about a week or, or two. <laughs> so we're making some progress on that. <laughs> That's awesome. It's just, um, is, is it just ESLEDB.com then, right? Yeah, it's just right ESLEDB.com. Okay. Yeah. And in addition to all of sort of our curriculum and things, um, we also, they say class and games. A lot of these are just available in the EDB uh, format, but there are some also other really fun ones that we've done. There's like a free Mother's uh, Day one up here right now. I think it's on the front page. Um, so you can try that in the PDF and EDB format. And then we've made a bunch of draggable games to sort of just make the lessons a little bit more fun. Um, I'm not sure. Do you like the game Wordle? <laughs> uh, what actually? I don't even know what that is. Oh, so well, it became big. I never really played it. People might might know it. <laughs> um, I don't know what Wordle is. I've heard of it. I don't know what it is though. You have to guess a five letter um, word essentially. Um, so I took that just because it's sort of, it's become popular and I made a ESL version of it that was simplified. Um, it's just loading for a second when it comes on here, it's simplified. Um, so you'd have to, for example, think of a five letter word. Like one of my students I played this with, she chose the word, um, iPads. So I put, okay, I, P, A, and then D and then S. And then here, as you can see, we have all like these little ones and it shows where the letter placement is. Um, so it's kind of fun. It's they, they have to guess the word essentially. And then we have little hints for them. Like you use this in art class. This word is a noun and a verb. And then it has a picture sort of describing it if they need it. So for this one, can you guess what it is, Jillian? P-A-I. What do you think? Oh, <laughs> uh, mm, is it paint? It is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, no, I've never seen that game before. That's cool. Yeah, it's just sort of a fun little interactive game. These are for a little bit more, you know, advanced uh, students because they do have to think of words. Um, and then we also have different versions of like Scrabble Junior where they just have to match the letters. Like I have the P in pink. Um, and just fun little extra things like that to help with the letter recognition. Um, if you ever needed a little extra time in a different class or something to pull them up, um, they're, they're really fun. And we have free versions of these on the site as well. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, I'm trying to come back to you. <laughs> Wait, so what do you have? Cause, cause there are, go, go back into your, into the games. Into like, the games. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So there are, you have paid ones, right? Oh, okay. I then I see that ones. trouble and then connect for mm -hmm. So there's freebies there. Yeah, there's freebies. Okay. Um, we sort of change these as well. Um, what we're trying to do is like every week we're putting up one that's free so that, and it's different so that people can go and download it. And those are found on our front 
page up here um, on home. Like as soon as you would type it in, like, for example, we have Mother's Day and this one's really cute. You get to uh, cook uh, the mom breakfast. The kid gets to decide <laughs> what Western foods their mom would like for breakfast. Um, and they get to drag it all together. Like the Cinco de Mayo one we had, they get to make tacos and they learn about like mole and, and mariachi bands and drag them around. <laughs> so it's that's pretty really fun. cool. That's really cool. I anytime I had the whole taco discussion with any mm -hmm. of my kids from China, they were like, what? It's, what you do? I what? Know. <laughs> I know it's sort of hard to to comprehend for them. So I, I uh, was teaching this one last week with a bunch of kids and they had a bunch of fun. Actually, I can show you on here. I really uh, like this one. It's a uh, here we the go. taco one? Yeah, the taco one. <laughs> Just one time years ago, years ago, uh -huh. I went into a Chinese restaurant and my uh -huh. daughter, it was like a fancy Chinese restaurant though. And, you know, uh -huh. like where, where they actually have like the China teacups that they, you know, serve yeah. you with. And um, my daughter, she was, she's 11 now. She's probably like three, two uh -huh. or three. And she wanted a taco. No, I'm sorry. She, no, I'm sorry. She wanted a pancake. That's what it was. That's, she wanted Ooh. a pancake and they didn't know what the pancakes were. And they brought her out a plain taco shell. She ate it, she was oh. like, I got pancakes. but it was a soft <laughs> taco shell that they brought out. Nice. No, that's fun. Yeah. So like with this one, uh, the hard one's kind of difficult to make it with. But, so I'll use the soft shell taco, but then here, you know, they could choose. I want you know, chicken and or beef. And it has just sort of interesting, like, do you like red salsa? Is it spicy? <laughs> uh, you know, they get to add what they like to it. Um, so that's why I really like this format. And I really wanted to make it um, our lessons in this format, just because of how easy it is to make it so interactive. Um, and yeah, even little cilantro and stuff. So that one's fun. And then later in this one, they even got to, uh, there's a pinata. <laughs> Which one do you want to use to hit the pinata? You know, just like little fun stuff. And then it showed all about different Mexican candies. And and so this one's for a little bit more advanced students. But uh, we're trying to, to also make um, a bunch of these and put them out for free during that week um, for festivals that are coming up. And that's sort of one of our goals for this year as well, um, is to sort of get a handle on all the different holidays and get some content out there for that. I actually don't know any of that Mexican candy. I'm, I'm learning from this. <laughs> I don't know any of that. Here's a little, <laughs> well, not a secret uh, about me. When I, I mean, I'm from the U.S., but from eight years old to 13, I lived in Mexico. So this one was really fun for me to make because <laughs> these were all of my favorite candies as a kid. <laughs> oh, that is fun. I didn't know that. This is really cool. This is really, really good. Uh, zero, I can show you over here. Um, we have, like, let me click on this one. The very first one, which is very, oh, that one went to the wrong one, but that's fine. So here it, it goes through all of the different um, you know, letters like uh, level zero goes through the alphabet and it focuses mainly on letter recognition rather than the actual phonetical sound, just because it's their first time maybe, you know, seeing these characters and things. Um, and then whereas level one, it goes more into the, the, the short and the long vowel sounds and then adding upon that um, as we go. And also with, you know, colors and and things once, you know, level one will sort of get into math away from that. So we're really trying to make it as comprehensive as possible and not just have it be vocabulary, vocabulary, but also, you know, numbers and uh, letters, phonics, all of that um, we're including into it. These are awesome. I love these. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay. So, um, all right. So you've got, the, they're like, they're going from like pre-K age. Like yes. Never learn English to mm -hmm. how, how old do you think that, you know, the people would be using level the level five. five. Yeah. Level five is, is going, is a definitely, so this is sort of what we have planned for it. Like uh, level one is sort of lower intermediate or, or lower beginner rather. The level two is going to be a higher beginner. Three is low intermediate. Four will be intermediate. And then five will be high. So I'm thinking that will be, you know, from the, it depends on the student's abilities. As we know, sometimes we have really young students who are great at, uh, you know, just pick it up really quickly, but probably around the 13 year old 
range there um, is or 12 to like 14 is what I'm thinking. And we're also styling each level a little bit differently so that um, it's it suits a different age group. Like you saw from the level zero one, it's very basic. It's definitely for a, a younger child. And then we're sort of trying to, to make it a little bit more advanced in the characters themselves that we use. Um, but also just what the classroom looks like that we use in the images and things like that, just just kind of show them that they're advancing. That is awesome. I love this. <laughs> Main goals of making ELS, ESL EDB was to create a curriculum that really was no prep that teachers could go into and not have to uh, you know, be confused over <laughs> and uh, just be able to go in and use it right away. And then we wanted to make it as interactive as possible, which is why we focus on the EDB interactive side of it, but we also provide the PDF so they can, you know, use it on whatever platform suits the most. And then the third one was just making it affordable for everyone. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's going along really well and everyone's been very supportive. So that's great. <laughs> They are super cool. These are super cool. I love the extra games that you can do too. Yeah. And I know that like, I know that some people love the, um, some people love the subscription services and some people yeah. prefer not to do the subscription services. Exactly. So it yeah. is cool to be able to have both options there, you know, like mm -hmm. different kinds of things. Um, with an EDB file, Mm -hmm. Is there anything different that you have to have on your computer to support it? Is there anything that you need to do differently? Right. So that's why EDB is mainly for class in now. There's nothing that you have to download if you're using class in to use an EDB file. Um, that is already in here in class in. Um, so you just have to open the file in it. Now, if you try to open the EDB file just on your computer, it might say you don't have something to open this file with. And that is um, because it's sort of a, this niche file type that Classen has focused on and sort of dominated in, in, in the market. Um, and so Classen is the easiest way to use that. So even if you wanted to play a game with your student um, and you were on a different platform, you could, you know, because it's free just to create an account, you can open up uh, it in class in and they can even like draw an arrow and you can drag it for them is something that um, some teachers have done and told me about before. I am going to go grab one of these and try it on class pod and see, because I know that all school has, um, so, okay. So when you're a teacher on all school, I just, sorry, my, my brain just works like this where I think of like all the different possibilities that you can use for everything. For sure. But for, okay. So for all school, they have, um, you could teach on zoom or you can teach on class pod and class pod okay. is, uh, basically it's supposed to be like the platforms that the, um, the Asian community is used to using. So whether it be like class in or VIP kids. So all school mm -hmm. was created by, or it's like managed by ex VIP kid teachers. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if they support the EDB files because it's totally yeah, different than zoom cool. or anything like that. And you can upload the files into it. So I'm going to have to go and check that. Cause that would be really yeah. cool to be able to offer that on that too. That would be yeah, really awesome. True. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. And here's like another example of why I like the EDB format. I, I have a dog. <laughs> so I love dogs, but uh, I'm, I'm planning on making a cat one too. But you can do things like drag a dog through a story with you. So this was one I made for a kid of mine who, who and this is on the site as well, who love dogs. They get to adopt it and they get to give them a name tag and a name. And then we Aww. go down and you take them to the vet and then, you know, they can listen to his, you know, cute little stuff. You, they can decide, does he need a shot yeah. Yeah, or no? Cause <laughs> some kids get a shot. Up. You don't want a shot. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, and then you'd bring them home. Oops. Let me bring them to the front real quick. And you can choose, you know, which water bowl he likes and, give them some food and it, it, it makes it really interactive for, so this was sort of another speaking activity lesson where we just provided questions to sort of outline an activity that you could do with the student that was at a, a stage that they can easily communicate with you. 
Um, and so we, we, we put out ones like these quite often. Then they go to a dog park. You got to say that quietly. So my dog doesn't hear it <laughs> and they can play and, and all that stuff. So it's, it's really sort of fun. And it uh, just, I, I've uh, only had good experiences with this, with this, uh, you know, format with my students and they seem to really enjoy it. That is so <laughs> cool. This is like the Barbie doll of curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, right? And you, you can have drag- a dress up one. Do you have a dress up one? I don't yet, just because so many people make them. So that is coming. <laughs> I do have, uh, of course, in our actual curriculum, because we do try to put games into it as much as we can. Um, pretty much every lesson has at least one or two pages that are is somewhat of an interactive game. Um, and so we do have a few on there where you have to dress um, like a girl and a boy. Um, in fact, I think I have um, that right here. I do. Let me go grab it. <laughs> um, but I did not do any sort of large here. I'm scrolling down. There we go. I didn't do it on any large actual scale, just sort of a simple little, because they learned boy, girl, and all these things, just a simple little one. <laughs> Aw, yeah. I like that. That's so cool. It's it is fun. so cool. I, I <laughs> love, I love the fact that there is like, even if you didn't want to, um, do like a whole level or you wanted to do like a special thing or whatever. Like I love the fact that you have like special occasion things and special game things. And that's really good. He's got a mustache. I know. I I love that. That's, that's (laughs) really, really good for building the relationship with your students. Like if you know that your student really likes dogs or you know that your student really likes Mm -hmm. learning about like you know, culture and you have taco Tuesday or you, you know, and you talk about the tacos. Like I've had that conversation and then I just show up the next class with like a, Hey, let's make a taco that teaches them. It builds the relationship. It makes you be providing, like you're providing so much more value than just the class content. I love it. Oh, good. Good. We have a, uh, I called it hamburger helper. You make a hamburger. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that one, that one's a student favorite as well. <laughs> There's some stuff on there like blue cheese. Everyone's like, "Ew, I don't like that." <laughs> and, you know, the jalapenos. I'm like, I want jalapenos on my burger. <laughs> I have fun with it. Yeah. <laughs> That is really cool. Well, thank you so much for sharing. And if anybody wants to. Um... And I know you do because this is really cool. If anybody wants to go ahead and grab any or all of these lessons, um, it is ESLEDB.com. And you can find teacher staff. So you are in social media. You are an Insta- you are in Instagram as mm-hmm. ESLEDB. Or, I'm sorry, ESLEDB, right? Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. And I'm going to come back to you and stop sharing my screen for a second. There we go. Okay. So I can see you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have, do you have a Facebook group or no? Uh, so it's ESL EDB is also for Facebook. Um, and we have a YouTube uh, channel where I'll upload some how to's on how to use the different file formats. And, um, also just, uh, actual live class examples of my classes with my students using the materials um, that they've given, you know, permission to use and uh, lots of different stuff on there. It's, and I'm having so much fun making it too. (laughs) I mean, honestly, I'm I'm looking at stars. I'm like, what can I do with this? You know, it, it's really a fun, (laughs) creative opportunity. I get to be like a little kid, like (laughs) what, you know, what activity can I do with shapes or with numbers? And it's super fun. And uh, I definitely enjoy it. <laughs> also, that is uh, awesome. not up yet, but I'm putting it up tonight. Um, there is just in case anyone does want to try anything. Like I said, we do have free stuff up there that we're changing weekly. Um, but I'm going to be activating a 25% off code for the whole um, site. And it's just going to be code class in. So just so people know about that. Um, it is just class in C L A S S I N and that one's 25% off the whole site. And and it's going to go up probably after this live, I'll put it up. (laughs) And how long is it? I think it's going to go, uh, it's sometime into mid June, I think a little while because I have some, uh, 
sort of lives coming up with class in actually. So I'm going to be using it for them as well. So that's the code class in. <laughs> okay. Very cool. That is awesome. That's awesome. Um, what? Oh, do you take suggestions? Yes. You have like a, so if somebody's like, oh, I think it'd be really cool if you made a dress up the dog lesson. Like, do you, mm -hmm. like, is there a way for people to like send you suggestions? There is, there is. Um, it, it is our email um, is eslevbcontact um, for that at gmail.com. And here it even says that I can share again really quickly our screen. Um, but it says that also on our site here and on the home page. <laughs> Let me look down here real quick. Maybe it got moved. It used to be right at the top. I got to put it back. <laughs> I'll put it back. But it said, if you need, you know, want anything made or have some suggestions, email us. I, we were redoing the site a few days ago, so it might have gotten moved. <laughs> okay. But, um, yes. So anyone can message us. And um, we've made different um, games, like, for example, one of our words with students, which is essentially the Scrabble Junior. Some different teachers uh, said, hey, you know, I'm teaching ocean animals with my student, and I'd like to have one of these boards made you know, have ocean animals on it. So I made that and put that up there for her. And like you said, yeah, dressing up dogs. There's a, actually there are two that I'm working on now that people have sent to me as well. 